Hello, community! Today, a short introduction into T5 models and flying T5 models. And here we go! It was summer of 2020 and there was a beautiful preprint by Google with the title Exploring the Limits of Transfer Learning with a Unified Text to Text Transformer. And now you know where T5 comes from it's a Text to Text Transfer Transformer. Beautiful. So, what is so special on T5, apart that it is from Google and not from OpenAI? Now, T5 is an encoder-decoder model. So this means we have a complete transformer architecture, different to BERT, different to GPT-3 or GPT-4. And this T5 encoder-decoder model was pre-trained by Google on a multitask mixture of unsupervised and supervised tasks. So we have a huge pre-training on multiple tasks, which is in itself beautiful. Now, you will hear, hear the term transfer learning. And what is it? This is where a model is first pre-trained on data-rich tasks. This is really the most expensive training part here, the pre-training part. And then if you have now a specific use case or a specific downstream task, as we call it, you fine tune it now with additional data. So you have a data set that is optimized for your downstream task. This may be a question and answer system. This may be translate from one language to another language. This may be summarize this paragraph of text in one or two sentences. And you have to provide for this task specific data sets where the system can be fine tuned and you get a much better performance for this particular task. So, this is a powerful technique in NLP, beautiful. And they treat it as a text to text problem. So, you have input text and you have output text, beautiful. Now, I would like to know that that there are some specific prefix. And whenever you work with some T5 model, you see, because they have been pre-trained on so many different tasks, it works well on a variety of tasks out of the box. So we only have a pre-trained system, not an additionally fine-tuned system. And if with a, just a simple prefix, because the system has to know what you want from it. So if you want to have a translation, you have to put the prefix, the English word translate in front of it. Translate English to German and then you have your expression. Or if you want to have a text summarization, you have to use the prefix summarize. A lot of my viewers write to me, they tried T5 and they did get, did not get anything. Well, they forgot to specify what they want from the system. A translation, a summarization, you get the point. Beautiful. So you might say, hey, why the complete architecture of a Google transformer? Well, simple. Those people in Google, they found that their original encoder decoder form works best if they apply this text to text framework. So neither the typical encoder only BERT stack nor the typical GPT decoder only stack. Yes, yes, yes. I would like that you understand that if we have now the text to token conversation, they use here the sentence piece variation. I have a particular video on all of this, also on sentence pieces, so that you know how the tokenization of the text is happening. And also they have a rather limited vocabulary of only 32,000 elements, tokens. But now comes the most important part here in the last paragraph. And they tried now, if they have this pre-tuned model, how can we optimize now a fine-tuning? And it was interesting because, you know, fine-tuning is just one way of tuning it. You can have some freezing applied to the layers. You can have some non-weight included in specific training parameters. But just for you to remember, Google found when they analyzed all the models, that fine-tuning, the typical classical fine-tuning 
where all of the weights are included in the fine tuning outperformed all other methods that are designed to update with fewer parameters. Those models are cheaper to run on a compute infrastructure in the cloud, but they do not give you the performance. So here you have clearly to understand the classical fine tuning where you really alter all the weights of the system in all the different layers and all the different transformer blocks. This is the best method to give you the best performance. But of course, it may cost more than other non-performant freezing methodologies. So beautiful. Now, T5 models. Because some of those T5 models, like the T5XXL model with 11 billion parameters, we cannot run for an, on, a, on a normal computer infrastructure, let's for example say on a free Google Colab notebook, because we do not have the system RAM available, not to speak about GPU RAM, they started also to provide smaller models. Of course, if you go down here from the 11 billion parameter model to the 770 million parameter model, of course, this model is so, so small that you cannot expect the same performance. So the further you go down, oops, sorry, here in the model size, of course, the performance will suffer. But you see that T5 was about summer 2020. And now I'm recording this here at the beginning of March 2023. So a lot of things happened. We had some evolutional step. We had a T5 1.1. This is a new tokenizer. There is a new parameter optimization, a lot of things happened under the hood. And then they even said, okay, with those prompt engineering, they had the version T5 1.1 language model 100,000. This is here for prompt engineering optimized. And please remember this model because it will be the stepping stone to the next chapter. Then we had a multilingual T5 and then we had a byte T5. So in this multilingual T5, I think currently you have over 100 languages. So ideal for language translation. And you might ask, okay, but what about FLAN T5? Oh yeah, checkpoints. All those models you can download for free. Google says, okay, here are the data, open source, download it. And here you have here the checkpoints for the T5 1.1, small base, large XL, XXL. And then, as I told you here, our LM100K models. Yes, yes, yes. And this is ability for prompt tuning like we have in GPT or chat GPT. They started here and you have here uh, in the Google Cloud here, the Google Cloud Storage GS here, you have your checkpoints for this model free to download. Beautiful. This was T5. T5 pre-trained, beautiful. But of course you can imagine the people said, okay, but hey, what about fine tuning now those T5 models by Google because they have the infrastructure. So welcome to Flan T5. What is Flan T5? Some viewers ask me. Well, of course you have to read at first the scientific preprint archive, December, 2022, Google published scaling instruction fine-tuned language model. Now they focused here on POM, their half or well, 540, I think, billion parameter model, but also they released the Flan T5 checkpoints. And this is what we're going to focus right now. So they have now this instruction fine-tuned Flan T5. Isn't that beautiful? And they noticed, of course, they are outperforming since published December 2022. Of course, the T5 systems that were published in 2020. So the Flying T5, I would like that you understand this, includes now all the improvements of the T5 and the T5 1.1, you remember? So we are here, T5 1.1. And if you look deeper, we are even here because, yeah, we'll show you. So Flying T5 is a newer, better system. And in plus, and this is the most important, it has been fine-tuned and it has not been fine-tuned on one task, but it has been fine-tuned on a multiple 
set of tasks. So let's have a look at this. Here's the, the preprint. You can read this in detail. But just to show you, key five was now fine-tuned on this, 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 this. And in total, Google fine-tuned here the data on 473 data sets on 146 different task categories and in specific about 1836 total tasks so they fine-tuned now almost as in a complexity like gpt 3.5 or jet gpt on a lot a lot of data now, what we do not have, if you talk about ChatGPT, we have not the reinforcement learning from human feedback aspect at all. So we should rather compare it to GPT 3.5, for example. And I got a lot of questions about what is FLAN. Now, you're not going to believe it. It is about fine-tuning language model. F from fine-tuning and from the language you have. The F-L-A-N. This is FLAN. Yes, so you have fine-tuned 1,836 tasks. Beautiful. Now, if you now start to fine-tune the T5 model, or if you start to fine-tune the FLAN T5 models, there's a huge difference. Because in T5, if we fine-tune it, we only have the pre-tuned model. But here, with more than 473 data sets already fine-tuned, if you now start to crash in with your fine-tuning, in the worst case, you can destroy the performance here of the Flyn T5, where you, I will not say delete, but you manipulate the already perfect fine-tuning that happened by Google, and now you overwrite with your own fine-tuning. So you have to understand that this is here a more sensitive job if you want now to fine-tune Flyn because FLAN has already been fine-tuned on a huge variety of multiple tasks. And this is the beauty of T5. Of course, those models are available free of charge. You can download it from the internet. Here you FLAN T5 checkpoints. Yeah, just wanted to show you they were initialized from the T5, 1.1, and then the language model adapted. Uh, model so you really have more or less the latest t5 version and the fine tuning happened by google and you have again from small to xxl all the different sizes that you can either afford or you have the computer infrastructure wherever you are at the university or the research studio or wherever you go where you can now execute this talking about fine tuning they also fine-tuned on a combination of data formats. And this is what we have to understand when we will fine-tune T5 and Flyn T5. Because they use some quite clever combination, and we do not want to destroy the fine-tuning that already happened. We want to put our fine-tuning on top of this fine-tuning. So let's have a very short look. You have, of course, instruction here without any example given or you have instruction with some example given and then you can further increase here with chain of sort for example cot i showed you this when we fine-tuned bio gpt that you simply give here your chain of thought as an example or no example with example so let's have a look of this already chain of thought thing so you say, hey, answer the following yes and no question by reasoning step by step. And in the training data set, you say, given to the question, can you write a whole haiku in a single tweet? And you give the answer. A haiku is a Japanese three-line poem. This is short enough to fit in 280 characters. So the answer is yes. This is what the system learns from the training data set after fine-tuning that Google was doing for you. And if you want to have now, also with an example, you have here a question, answer the following yes and no question by reasoning step by step. Can uh, whatever suffer from hepatitis, the answer in your training data set is given. This only affects uh, organisms with livers. So since this thing has no liver, the answer is no. And then based on this template, if you want, 
you give now the next question, answer the following yes or no, so identical question. Can you write a whole haiku in a single tweet? And you give the answer, haiku is yes, 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 yes. So the answer is yes. So the system knows exactly according to what schema, according to what template structure it has learned, it will give you an answer and how it will argue the chain of thought. And since it was trained a combination of this, we have to be a little bit careful with our own fine tuning. And I will show you how we would take care about the data structure in a short time. Beautiful. So now you can see we have now FLAN T5 models from the base, large, XL and XXL from 11 billion parameters down to 70 million parameters. And yes, there's even a FLAN T5 small model but honestly, the performance of such a mini, such a small model, yes, I, I, it is there, but I haven't written it down because it does not give you a corresponding performance. So you see, we have T5, we have Flan T5, and yes, a little bit later, we will look at the T5 optimized model. If we will fine tune those with checks and facts on an optimized compiler base, what is the performance in comparison to the other models? So you see, we have already about a dozen models. And now that we have so many models, just what we do with them. Now, if you want to run inference, you know that Flan T5 you can use out of the box because it has been fine-tuned already. So it is ready for use. T, uh, the pure T5 is not ready for use because it only has been pre-trained. So, if you want to see Flan T5, if you use it, how you use it here on a free Colab notebook, this is the video I did two months ago. And I showed you how you can optimize your inference run with a Flan T5 large model. This is the largest model that is currently supported by a free Google Colab notebook. Go there, run your own tests. Beautiful. Inference is a simple sequence of code. You know, we have our transformer from Hugging Face and we say hey, import from Hugging Face, our auto model for a sequence to sequence language model and our tokenizer systems. Then you choose a specific model now here. We go from Google, as I told you, provided Flan T5 and you have a, a corresponding tokenizer, Google Flan T5. Then you have your input text to the system. You convert it to a PyTorch tensor you have your tokenizer and then you let the model run with this input and it generates an output. And this output is for a step-by-step -step recipe to make bolognese pasta. They will give you the recipe. Beautiful. But this is not at all a problem. This is just the inference. Now, to fine tune this model, and I would like to stress this because I get questions where you see, maybe it's not clear to everybody. Now, to fine tune a complete transform architecture like T5 or Flan T5 is different. We need a lot of compute resources. We need a lot of memory and we need a lot of uh, cloud storage. So, how can we fine tune this? Now, at least there are six different ways. And I'll show you some of them in the next videos. But understand, there's not only one way to do it. Let me show you here in particular three ways that are in the documentation of Hugging Face. And I will give you the link to this in the description of these videos. Now, the most simple, the easiest version, and maybe I will start with this, is to fine tune a pre trained model with the Hugging Face Transformer Trainer class. Because by Hugging Face, they have a specific trainer class coded, programmed for you, and you just are free to use it. And it's so beautiful. This is the easiest part. If you're a beginner, I would highly recommend you start with the first one. Or you have the option. If you do not want uh, some, some class or some library by, by some third parties, you can say, OK, I fine tune now a pre-trained transformer model in TensorFlow 2 with Keras functionality. Beautiful. This will be great when we look especially at some more complex T5X. So this means checks, flags, library implementation on a TPU. 
Or if you're really a, a hardcore PyTorch fanatic, you can of course fine tune a pre-trained transformer model in your native PyTorch language. Beautiful. Just want to show you because people mix up those things. How does the core element look like? So if we fine tune a uh, transformer model in PyTorch with this hugging face trainer, you have this element of code. You have a trainer, you have your model, you have your training arguments, you have your training data set, you have an evaluation data set, and you have a metric where you do the evaluation against. And then to fine tune the system, you simply have the code sequence trainer dot train. So whenever you see something like this, this trainer is a class from the Hugging Face Transformer that makes life so much easier for us. Now, if you go with TensorFlow, you will see we have a different notation. And here our main core element is we have our model that we downloaded from Hugging Face and then our data set. Our data set can be huge. So we have to have optimization for memory, for compiler functionality, for a CPU, GPU interplay. And here TensorFlow has some beautiful, beautiful classes defined for us, where we have our data set, the shuffle, our tokenizer. And then, you know, we say compile our model, you give them a specific optimizer. And then you say model.fit, so fine tune, learn the model with our data set, TensorFlow data set. So whenever you see this sequence, you know you're operating in TensorFlow and it is nice. Now, as I told you, I, PyTorch, if you see anything that looks into structure in your programs, because some of my viewers copy from different sources, and then they send me their code and they complain, what is wrong in my code? <laughs> and I see that they mix up a little bit. So please, next time you see this, for an epoch in the range, the number of epochs, one, four, 20, whatever you have, you have your training data loader, your batch, your output, your loss function, your optimizer, your learning rate scheduler, and, and, and this is a pure PyTorch implementation Please do not combine it with any other code segments from the other elements I just showed you. So beautiful. Now we are already in the fine tuning and this is great. Now, my next video, we will go and code from the start to beginning of a complete example. I want that you have one complete code sequence, how we fine tune a T5 system. The video afterwards, we will fine tune a FLAN T5 system on a very particular data set for a very specific task. So we will take into consideration all the fine tuning that happened on a FLAN T5, and we will have a specific task that we want to have further evolved close to perfection. And I will show you the complete code sequence, the complete Jupyter notebook, uh, I hope we can. I can run it on a collab. If not, yeah, I give you the Jupiter Lab, no problem. So this is the second video, and then of course, you know, since summer of last year, Google internally also switched to T5x. So with jacks and flags now, the perfect compiler optimization. We will now or then fine tune. I will show you in a video how to fine tune T5x models for you where you can run this on TPU systems in the cloud. So we already are in the next three videos <laughs> that I show you which is the best compute platform if you have specific tasks. If you run on a data center CPU, uh, GPU from NVIDIA, like a V100, a A100, or a Hopper 100, there is a difference in code that you have to be careful because it has incompatibilities, especially if you use a V100. I will show you there are things that are simply incompatible and you have to know this. Then I will show you about the hours of runtime. Some people complained to me, they started this, but after 50 hours, they had to terminate the run. And no, 
I give you an idea that you know the hours of runtime. If you use a particular fine tuning method, the hours of runtime can be hundreds or 200 hours. Code optimization. I will tell you what I know, how I do it, people I trust, how they are professionals doing code optimization. For example, how to include deep speed, why to include deep speed, on what platforms does it really matter? And of course, there's the big question about how much does it cost? And can we tune our compute cost? So some of my viewers try to become here startup companies where they offer this service to their clients. Some of my viewers are clients that they have received an offer from in their continent, in their, in their nation, some AI specialist. And they send me the financial offer they received and they ask me, hey, is this a reasonable price? So I will give you some basic ideas so that you are able, if you fine tune T5 models, that there are some very rough guidelines just about the compute cost. I'm not talking about profits. I'm not talking about overheads. But you have an idea where we are and how much will it cost you if you fine tune. T5 systems, Flying T5 systems, and T5X systems, Jack's Flax. And maybe I talk a little bit about the future. So we're already half an hour in. I say thank you. This was the introduction video, and the next three videos will be fine tuning with code examples.